Um, do you mind if I test the chair for a minute? No, uh, I've got this yeah, issue, you know. So, I, I don't know if I need this though. Just, you know, I fell. Yeah. I yeah. know. Well, you yeah. know. So just, I can't. I just, yeah, just make yourself safe. comfortable. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, how was your day? Oh, it was great. I'm just so high on on my project meeting. My, you know, my team. I've got this mm -hmm. great team, and um, we're doing this this video game. And shall I keep telling you about it now, or do you think? Yeah, just tell me a little oh, bit okay, about I'll tell it. You a sure. Bit about it. Okay. Uh, I, the the subject matter is so valid, and I, you know, in my career, in the, my past, I've worked with artistic kids, and I, they're so literal. Mm -hmm. So this, this video game is going to be for word uh, comprehension and association and nonviolent. So they can actually with visuals and, you know, we're working on how graphics and everything that's going to be really get those words lined up with, with uh, you know, being able to do a video game, which, you know, I think an artistic child is just totally going to be right for because, you know, it's so tactile. So we just got started today. Wow. It sounds great. We're very yes, excited. very exciting. Uh, thanks for, for sharing. Yeah, that. I'm really excited. And I'm still yeah. kind of buzzed. You know, I just get so high. Oh, I bet. I just yeah. have so much fun at work. I just love the people. I just love my job. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. So, do you have anything that you would like to talk about today? Well, um, yeah, I'm really dreading going home. Um, mm -hmm. You don't mind if I have some No, water. please do. I, I have some water. Yeah, my mouth yeah. gets really dry. I just get so nervous uh, when I'm talking about myself. I do great in these meetings, you know, and I'm still a little on the adrenaline rush, you know, and then that's going to drop pretty quick because work is so great. It's just, you know, I go in the door and I'm just on. And, and then I have to go home and face John and the, yeah, so tell the me, rooms. Tell me more about that. What? Well, you know, he's home all day. And right. And he, Mr. Chekhov, he thinks he, <laughs> in, in his room, which is, he won't really let me even in there now because he's getting really fed up with mm -hmm. the way things are, which isn't that much different than it's always been, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, we get guests over and I can make it look great. You know, just close all the doors and just clean out the, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Clean out the dining room, right. get the candlelight going. So it seems like he's more disturbed about it now than he used to be, is what you're saying. He's just getting, oh, he's gained weight. Okay. And, I mean, I'm not really very attracted to him anymore anyway, but, I mean, the intimacy is just nothing. We're pretty much not even sleeping together. Um, he kind of kicked me out of bed because he was sort of just tired of my lack of interest. But mm -hmm. we are such good friends, mm -hmm. and I just don't want to lose him. I, after all these years, you know, and right. um, I think he's he's eating and he's he's reclusive in his room uh, and he's um, grouchy. And when he gets grouchy, he gets pretty acidic. So it sounds like the relationship's really suffering. And, it is. Uh, it's 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 there's not much connection anymore. Not so much. It sounds like there's lack of um, not just sexual connection but emotionally that yeah you know, disconnected too he's kind of resenting yeah. my job he's not that excited oh, to about my day anymore and i'm the one that goes out every morning with my cup of coffee you know at right. seven in the morning and he's still asleep right and then i come home we used to really share each other's day and but his day isn't quite mm -hmm. as, as eventful as mine mm -hmm. because he doesn't have all the interaction and the yeah excitement that i have and so, then when you come home what happens typically well typically now um i kind of have to you know find him <laughs> he, he doesn't come out you know to doesn't say hello or no anything, right? he doesn't come out and greet me or anything i kind of have to go say john i'm home you know? and then um he used to at least fix something for dinner i mean he would start it anyway or he, he he's kind of in charge of the shopping mm -hmm. so he would usually have something started i would you know help but he pretty much would get sal a salad made and maybe some something nice to drink and um, you know have the table set right maybe, you know just kind of inviting and 
He's but not anymore. Not anymore. No, he's sort. It's just like John. You want to eat? I mean, it's, we can have dinner. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want. And he stays in there. And then he, he he'll come out. But it's like I kind of have to coach him out. And and I'm really too tired to have to do all that. Yeah, I can I see don't that. Wanna, You're working all day. Right? Yeah, and I feel like he kind of owes me a little bit because I do bring in so much mm -hmm. more income. You mm -hmm. know, he gets to do his art with his writing. Right. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like there's a lot of tension in the It's marriage, tension. It's right? unspoken. It's yeah. just kind of, he's kind of growly. And he's got feet problems now because he's gaining weight. So he thinks he might have gout. And he's, he's eating a lot of red meat. Mm. So it's not good. No, it's not good. And I, you know, I've recently lost quite a bit of weight. Mm -hmm. and he hasn't participated in anything like that. So we eat differently now. Okay. I'm vegetarian. He oh, eats wow. meat. Wow. But, you know, he was great about it okay. at first. And yeah. now he's even using it as more discouragement towards me. So you're feeling better about yeah. your health and yeah. he's feeling worse. It sounds like. yeah. yeah, it's kind of like scales are right. sliding. So. And I am not attracted to him with his weight like that. And there's a complacency anyway that's been sort of happening between us. But the friendship has never gone away. Now that's starting to recede. And I don't know what he's doing, but I, I'm getting kind of worried. He's on the phone a lot. I don't know if he might divorce me because I think he's... So you think he's moving in that? direction i don't know i mean he's a kind of secretive he's on the phone okay. a lot okay you know mm -hmm. so how are you coping with this situation it sounds like it's really stressful i mean you have a, a high stress job and then mm -hmm. you come home and then pretty empty or maybe yeah. lonely at home lonely and, uh yeah i you know. um shopping i mean i can so i mean i just bought right. a pair of shoes today before i came Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember you said you really like shoes. I do. I really like shoes. Yeah, yeah tell me more about that. that My shoes? Yeah, that you. How, how did you get interested in shoes? In shoes? Well, I really have had an, a, a real kind of addiction to red shoes since I was a teenager. Um, I took ballet. And, and you've got red shoes there. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> yeah. much it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I. And I got to make sure they go with, I mean, there's a red tone in this. I mean, they got to go with what I'm wearing, you know. Right. But, um, well, it's kind of a strange story because, you know, the original Grimm's fairy tale of the, of the red shoes, she's, it's hideous. I mean, they cut her feet off and they keep da dancing. And, and in a way, I feel that about myself, you mm. know. So it's kind of strange when I really think about it. But, um when I was in high school, we had a little ballet troupe, you know, we all did ballet after school, and we were going to do a recital for the school, and uh, they chose the red shoes, which I've been in love with since my dad took me to see it when I was 12, uh, the, the ballet. I mm -hmm. didn't know the actual right. Grimm's fairy tale. Okay. Me. So um, I thought this is my big chance, you know, to do the part of the girl that wears the red shoes, and my really good friend i mean more than good friend uh, <clears throat> uh, becky got the part uh, of the girl the part you really wanted yeah. yeah so it was a lot of tension between us but we had you know a relationship i mean it was more than <clears throat> i'm really comfortable talking about yet <laughs> i guess okay. i don't know so Becky was a special person to you, yeah. is what you're saying. Right. Yeah. So I was jealous of my, of her. Yeah. You know? Right. And then I was a sunflower, so that was humiliating. I had to wear okay. a headdress. I mean, it was a pretty okay. little dance we did while the flowers, but she got to do the part, which right. was extremely dramatic and um, beautiful. And those red ballet slippers, they dyed them. Satin. Wow. And I've always loved shoes since I was a kid. I mean, but because I see them as artful. I mean, a shoe is a sculpture to me. It's a high heel is is a art piece, and I just love looking at them. And um, I even like to draw them. I like to design them. But uh, something clicked with me with the red shoes. Since then, I thought, well, I can wear them. I can wear my own red shoes. You can wear them now. I can wear them now yeah. every day. Right. <laughs> and I, you know, I. I love dance and uh, 
you know, something about red shoes and, and uh, it's a the shoot the movie had a terrible ending the mayor you know she had to make a choice between her husband and dance and she threw herself on a train I mean mm. and I remember her lying there and dying at the end of the film and how I felt when I was 12 and it's always really haunted me but mm. the actual story the Hans Christian Andersen the 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 one that they did um, the play of I mean mm -hmm. it was a little different ending I mean she I think it, I kind of can't remember the ending. I just always think of that girl lying in the train tracks. But the ending of the actual Prince Fairy Tale is really hideous mm -hmm. because the shoes won't stop dancing. Mm. Wow, that sounds terrible. That's horrible. Right. I mean, it's scary. It's, it's, yeah. a horror, it's like a horror movie. And right. I kind of get that image sometimes because I did read that story. But I do think about my, my tendency to work really hard and wonder sometimes mm -hmm. if I'm playing something out. You know, like just trying the to. The red shoes that won't yeah. stop dancing. Still trying to get that part. Yes, maybe. Yeah. And my dad, see, was the one that loved to watch me dance. So, wow. And my mom was kind of so disapproving, and cold, and uh, he really came to my. He tried to come to my recitals and loved watching me dance and, and saw me dancing when I was really little and acknowledged it. It was always a way to, for him to see me. So it, you know. It, I think I understand it, but I still can't start stop the compulsion to buy him. So, red, I mean, I, so it sounds like the red shoes have meaning at multiple levels. Yeah, right? multiple. And I've kind yeah. of self-diagnosed right. that in a lot of ways. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm fairly aware of that. But what, what's happening with the shoes at home is is there's no more. It's just it's out of control. I mean, I'd probably buy a pair every day. I can afford it. I can go right. out to work and buy anything. John doesn't really keep track of the money. I mean, I pretty much am in charge right. of the finances. I'm more left-brained of us. Right. But he's starting to wonder. I mean, I mean, I I've, I've been collecting things for clothes, and I call it my collection. I don't call it hoarding. I, whatever that word is, I don't. Yeah. That I associate that with filth and homelessness and despicableness, and I mean that I don't. I'm not. I I just. I'm not a hoarder. I a hoarder. I work at Microsoft. I mean, I'm, I'm high tech. Right. I, right. I mean, what is that? Is that something? I just, it's, it's just so shaming if I'm going to be called a, that. Well, I think it, it might be helpful just to think of it as with more curiosity than judgment, oh. and to say, you know, this is really interesting that I. I'm collecting all these things, and I, and I understand how you feel like a label mm -hmm. um, is not helpful. So it's not necessary to use the label so much, yeah. but as to think of more of the behaviors that go with it. And so yeah. when people collect a lot of things um, and acquire, there, there's three parts to the problem when mm -hmm. it starts to interfere when, in someone's life. Part of it is acquiring, mm -hmm. another part of it is saving, and another part is difficulty in discarding. So some people yeah. only have difficulty discarding. It's like they're not acquiring new things, they're just not can't get rid of anything. So there's too many things in their house. Yeah. Um, other people have a problem with saving, so it's just they feel like they have to save they everything. Have to save. They just hold on to things, really can't let them go. Um, other people have a problem with acquiring. So they keep acquiring more right. and more. Some people can acquire, and then they also can discard, but uh -huh. they're acquiring at a rate faster than they're discarding. Mm -hmm. So it still accumulates in the house. And regardless of what type of behavior there is, there's clutter. Yeah. And to the point that it interferes with either you moving throughout your home or you utilizing all the rooms in your home, or it really bothers someone you're living with. Yeah. And creates tension within the home. So would you say that kind of fit? Any of those things fit? Well, it's not. It's it's not just stuff. I mean, it's it's particular stuff. It's the clothes it's acquiring. I guess mm -hmm. and I can't release. I don't want to. I, I seem to have difficulty with that. Although I. Almost gave a dress to my daughter. Oh, you did? Yeah, but what happened? <laughs> it still had the tag on it, but I just thought, you know, there's a conference coming up. I could 
now I could really look good in it. And, you know, I've been working out with my arms, so I could wear a cocktail dress. Yeah. I feel good about my arms for the mm -hmm. first time in ages. And, you know, maybe I'm unaware to that. And it seems perfectly rational to mm -hmm. me. So, and the kids don't ask me, well, the ones I see don't ask me that often for any of the stuff that I have, uh, any of my collection. Uh, but it's primarily, well, it's piles of, well, it's so embarrassing, but it's uh, magazines, cooking magazines, mm. and newspapers mostly. And, you know, the kids are gone. They're all gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, they're growing up. Now, yeah, right? yeah. Their rooms are in. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I mean, I know I could clear, if I could clear one out, I could have an office at home so I could work at home. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to work at home. Mm hmm. I feel like John and I really need the time apart if I, right. you know, and so there's these empty rooms, these bedrooms, these, you know, and they don't, have, we don't have the kids stuff in there anymore. We got, you know, cleared them out because right. they're, they're gone. I can't have shrines. Right. So, um, so you're able to let go of the kids stuff. It was hard, yeah. but you did it. Except their stuffed animals. Mm, stuffed animals were harder. Your stuffed animals are actually. <laughs> and is there something about the stuffed animals that made them particularly difficult? Yeah. Yeah. I, my mom. Um, <clears throat> yeah. My mom didn't want me to keep mine. She got rid of. Them. Ones that you really loved? Yeah. yeah. You know, you get all floppy, you know, because you yeah, love them so much yeah. and their necks wear out. But. Right. Yeah, kids get really attached yeah. to their stuffed animals. And something in their eyes, you know, to me, they look alive. Really. Mm -hmm. and Felt they, like they were real. Yeah. 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 Real friends I could talk to. Yeah. She was so icy. She did stuff like that. So I, um, I actually. Nobody knows it, but the kids' stuffed animals are up in the closet shelves, okay. lining the, the top shelves in all the rooms. So you didn't want to do what your mom did, you just no. get rid of them, yeah? No. Well, I can see a little bit, Eva, that as we're talking, that this is a complex problem for you. It's, it's, yeah. it's really complex, and I feel so embarrassed, and, and yet I'm comfortable with our home. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable there, and John has tried to clear it out. He's gone in, and you know he's home, so you know he doesn't can't right. think of an inspiration one day right. for his writing, and you know, well, well, I'll clean, and right. I, you know, and he he actually did a huge overhaul one time, and I was sort of by his side, kind of allowing him. It was really tough. It was about ten years ago, and. We kind of were trying a new star to see if I could. Okay. And he never got to the closets with the stuffed animals. I don't know what he would have done with that. He's pretty compassionate that yeah. way. I, I don't. So maybe he would have understood that. He might have. Yeah, he's pretty whimsical that way. I mean, he and I both like stuffed animals and um, use them. Have used them as uh, mascots between us. You know, as give each other. A, you know. A stuffed animal becomes kind of our mutual pet, you know, that sort of thing. Right. Um, but the rooms still were very empty, and I felt really, it felt hollow to me without my collection of cooking magazines and my newspapers, which are so hard to throw away because they're full of so much information, and mm -hmm. it's actually his history now right. in some yeah. ways. Right. No, you're right. Because I've had them a really long yeah. time, some of them. Well, one of the things that sometimes makes it hard for people to let go of when they have a lot of things collecting um, is the, their creativity. So it's often oh. people who are very creative oh. and can think of mm -hmm. potential uses for things. Mm -hmm. And it's a great strength to have the creativity, but then it backfires a little bit yeah. because, uh, like you were saying with the cocktail dress that you're mm -hmm. thinking of giving to your daughter, mm -hmm. that you could think of, oh, but maybe I could wear it yeah. here. Or you think of, you know, a, a cookbook, a cooking recipe. Maybe I could make this one day. Yeah. 
So it's that, oh, you can see the potential for using something mm -hmm. that There's can potential. make it more difficult Everything seems to let it go. Yeah, yeah and sort of like, um, well, you know, and I've changed my diet, so, you know, some of these magazines could go because I don't eat pasta anymore, but mm -hmm. John, and he doesn't need to, and, but, um, so that's a that, that's that's a thought, but but the the and newspapers, um, I feel guilty that I don't read them. You know, I when they come, I, I just maybe scan the headlines, or I I'm just too tired. Or I just don't. You know, we still you know we get still get newspapers, and mm -hmm. you know one of us buys one. You know, every day. I think John's stopping not doing. <laughs> I think they, there's enough, so he's yeah. But you know, I feel. My dad always read the newspaper, and it was really important to him. And you know, seeing him sitting there with the newspaper, and, and how newspapers are dying now because mm -hmm. of the internet. I mean, that's one thing. The industry I'm in, Microsoft, we're killing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the internet, we're software, we're we're killing all these old things that were so valid and so important. And mm -hmm. and my dad worked for a newspaper when he was really young. So, and you said you were close to your dad. Yeah. Yeah, and it feels like part of him, in a way, letting, you know, just tossing him in a bin with all that work and writing someone's mm -hmm. done, and I didn't read it, mm -hmm. and I purchased it, and I didn't read it, and, you know, a book review or a, a story, or, you know, I, they'll catch my eye as I'm starting to, you know, I get them, you know, I get the boxes out, and I'm going to try to get rid of some, and then something catches my eye, and that's it. Yeah, and then you can't let it go. Well, I think one of the things that we'll do together is work on two things at the same time. And one of the things would be maybe changing some of the behaviors, like a keep continuing to acquire things, mm -hmm. and maybe helping you decrease some of the clutter that might be interfering with your life or John's life mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. But also uh, working at the same time on things that are connected to memories and oh. trauma in your life. Yeah. So do you know the DNA molecule, the double helix? It's, I've it's seen like it. There's yeah. two yeah. strands to mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and they're, they crisscross. Mm -hmm. It's like one strand would be working on changing behavior, and the other strand would be working on the trauma or the connections with these behaviors. Because I don't think we can work on one without the other. Oh, it's like the, that there's both in yeah. your life. Like there's real meaning. Mm -hmm. or attachment to something traumatic with some of these possessions. Mm -hmm. Almost makes me wonder if um, acquiring things has been a way you've coped with anything in your life. Has, has that been part of it for you? Like oh. when things have gotten hard, has yeah. it helped you to feel better? I, I, I kind of think it has. Well, I, you know, because I have had, I've had kind of a lot of loneliness. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, with my mom being, she really didn't like the way I kept my room when I was little, uh, young, and she would want me to clean it up, and I, you know, I would fight her, and then, and then, you know, and the stuffed animal thing was really tough, and then she got rid of some of my clothes that were too small for me, but I had loved those clothes, and some of them she made. I mean, there was an alphabet dress. Oh, wow. We called it my alphabet dress. Yeah. And I had my picture taken in it, and she got, was getting rid of it, and I just, it was like... A relative I mm -hmm. couldn't and then she did it you know and so our relationship became so so cold so or was always cold I don't know. and so I think you know I remember in my college roommate I had half the room pretty stacked with clothes and newspapers and papers and she got she just hated it mm. So, I'm trying to think what what would have set it off. It mm -hmm. what would have it seemed like I do find it somehow comforting. I don't know why exactly, mm -hmm. but it feels like I'm kind of contained maybe, mm -hmm. and, and maybe I don't like empty spaces. I don't. I don't feel comfortable in big rooms. I don't tell, like. Tell me more about that. What yeah. is it? Well, I don't like open that space. Yeah, okay. I can get pretty panicked in the rooms. Okay, like in theaters, really high ceilings. Okay, had some panic attacks. Yeah, and 
I feel panic when somebody wants to threatens to get rid of my stuff. My, my yeah, it questions. sounds like it. It sounds like yeah. that that really creates a lot of anxiety for it you. Does. Yeah, and it's embarrassing, and that's why I think I'm getting. I'm, I feel depressed when I go home. Be, I, I don't know if it's because of the stacks cause my de me to feel depression when I go in the room, mm -hmm. rooms, or when I walk in the door. I mean, it's like you know, I walk into Microsoft, and it's like this. I mean, you know, and I go right. home, and it's right. But it's familiar, and a haven has kind of a smell, mm -hmm. not a bad smell, but kind of a smell. My daughter is so so sick of it and she's I think trying to get that dress maybe with some way of her trying to give me a big hint because you know it's just you know it gets me really right and so I I mean I know enough about human behavior that I'm the opposite of my mom because she's so neat yeah, it sounds like you and your mom are different in a lot of ways a lot of ways yeah I'm more like her on Microsoft, I mean, that persona. Because mm -hmm. she ran a cake shop and she had people who would love to watch, come in and watch her decorate. And she would have people sitting around and, you know, her cakes were just works of art. And she was very meticulous in how she did that. Mm -hmm. So, and my dad's a whole other story too, because he was kind of a sad, disappointed man. And I don't think he got enough from her. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot. There's, there's a lot there. There's a lot. A lot there. Yeah. And I'm noticing the time. And oh, we're, okay. We're getting close to the end of our time. Okay. Um, and I feel like I'm really starting to understand you more and getting to know you better, which is great. I, I'm, oh, good. I'm really happy about that. I'm thinking um, of what I'd like to leave you with today. Okay. And so. I have a book that I really like, which okay. I'll mention to you, and um, I don't know if, the reason I'm hesitating is I don't know if it's time for us to start working on it together, okay. but I did want to mention it because okay. I've used it with other people in my practice, and they've really liked it a lot, Okay, and it's um, it's called Buried in Treasures, okay. and in treasures. so I want to introduce okay. it to you. Okay. And within the next few weeks, we'll probably ask you to get a copy okay. so that we can start talking about it together. But I want you to know that there is a really helpful resource that okay. we can use in the future. And then I have, um, I copied one page from the book, which I thought might be something we could start with. And I'd like to share it with you. Okay. And it has, it's for helping in non-acquiring. Yeah. No. And I think what I'd like you to do is read this over. It just asks you to think about why you might want to reduce acquiring and ways to think about something that you're thinking of purchasing. And it helps you sort through whether you'd really like to keep it or not. Okay. So it asks you, you know, to think about things like, do I plan to use this within the next month? Do I have enough money? Do I have a place to put it so it doesn't add to the clutter? Oh, you know, am I sure I truly want this and will not return it? Is it consistent with my goals and values? Do I have a true need, not just a wish for it? So it, it causes you to pause mm -hmm. and think. And you might still end up purchasing it anyway. Yeah. And that's okay if you do. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be helpful if you could begin to increase your awareness of how you're thinking about things okay. rather than seeing something like, oh, I'd really like that, so I'm going to get it without even Impulse. stopping and yeah. really thinking it through. And then there's some other questions here about, do you already have something similar? Are you buying <laughs> it because I feel bad? So am I feeling depressed right now? So Because acquiring things does help with mood. A lot of that's why people call it retail therapy. Right? right, I know. Right, because people go shopping and then they feel better. And I do it at night too. There's a little bit of a rush, like online. Yeah, right? yeah online, online is shopping so easy. And at right. night, and you know, with John and the issues, uh, just at night, you know, getting up and yeah. So that that's a whole other level now yeah. that we can shop online. Yeah, it is. And so these might be some questions that would be helpful. Okay. You think you'd be willing to just look at this during the next week and yeah, I'll try. 
And I'm not expecting anything to change or that you would um, stop purchasing or acquiring things. Mm -hmm. It's more just a, uh, introducing some new thoughts okay. or some questions. And then we could talk about how that went. Okay. That's tough, though. That's the shoes thing. Almost, you know, that's... Mm -hmm. Well, as I hear you talk about the shoes, and you told me the story behind the shoes, I don't think the shoes are going to be the first thing. No, probably not. I think that's going to be a hard one mm -hmm. because it's connected to your friend in high school. Mm -hmm. It's connected to losing that part. It's connected to your dad. Mm -hmm. It's connected to your mom. And, yeah, you know, and my job. Really, your job. It's got so many connections. Mm -hmm. So that might be one that we work on it later. Down later. The road. Okay, that's feel it makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about yeah. but yeah, I do compulsively buy clothes uh, quite a bit. And you know, my job, you know, it's like you know, you want a new suit a different suit every day. I mean it's like you can't wear the same suit every day. <laughs> you know, I want right. to you know, I, I mean I'm image to maintain. So but I have a lot of suits. I mean right. my closets are yeah, so maybe one thing that would help too, Eva, is if you could think about what might be the easiest thing for you to work on. Okay, okay. You know, the shoes sound like one of the hardest the hard, things. Yeah, that's really but hard. But maybe there'd be something that would be a little bit easier, and, and we could talk about that next time. Well, and, yeah, I won't go on because I'm not supposed to go, but there is this way you can have three boxes, and the middle box can be, I want to think about it. If right. I can even just get them to think about it, it might help me like with the newspapers. Of course, I might just build another whole big stack. But right. it might be, because having that stop gap takes the pressure off. Mm -hmm. And if it just becomes another big stack, I don't know what to say about that. But I might be able to tolerate it for maybe 10 minutes a day or just time myself. Mm -hmm. you know, well, we'll get to that. Yeah. So but it, it sounds like you've already done some thinking about some strategies. I think of some, I just don't know what to do. It's just. I don't want to be left alone in the house with the piles of my collections, I want to call them now, but because uh, I don't want John, if John goes and I'm left alone, mm -hmm. then I just, that to me would be really scary. Okay. So I, well, I hear that. I hear yeah. that you're really scared of being left alone with all this. These with, things. Even though it comforts me when he's there, but if he was gone and I'm right, it feels like it'd be a whole different story. Okay. So I'll remember that. Okay. And I'll make sure that we work on that. Okay. Okay. Well, thank so you. Let's, yeah, let's stop here for today. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you're really welcome. Appreciate it.